Well, welcome out there once again to my program. Always a pleasure to be here. And always happy to have you out there watching and listening intently. We've got a, uh, I should say, I have a couple of guests that uh, they've been on before and uh, they uh, are pretty uh, savvy when it comes to issues in the city of Fall River. So I can't put anything over on them, that's for sure. I don't know if a city, city officials can put anything over on them. Now we've got some issues that, uh, in the city uh, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of especially. We're going to start off with the uh, landfill. Uh, you've been reading the uh, newspaper lately. A lot of uh, discussion about whether the uh, landfill will remain open, uh, whether uh, other companies uh, will come in, different proposals, uh, trolls should pay, this or that. But what does that mean to the taxpayer? What does that mean to the homeowner? More taxes, more, uh, uh, more uh, regulations. Uh, and then we have a story coming out that uh, my guest is uh, going to uh, expound upon somewhat. And uh, I know he, uh, he likes to think he's the Jack Addison of uh, Fall River, but actually it's C.J. Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> Me, the Jack Addison of Fall River? <coughs> I'll accept that. And Stephanie. Stephanie, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Stephanie I'm Corey. recovering. Yes. What do you, you have? Flu or? Uh, I call, I've been told I have what's called a winter cold. Excuse me? A winter cold. Oh, that's, that's unusual. It just it stays and stays and stays. And part of it is because of the dry heat and the, in the you know, the, the heat I'm in the home. I'm recovering as well, and, so I can feel for you. Yeah. So it's not going to relent until spring, summer? Yes, which better come sooner than later. You'll be here. Uh, this is uh, almost the end of February. I'm done with this yeah. weather. We're, we're most well, you Floridians <laughs> can't handle this stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. I want my heat, uh. please. So we got um, we got this business uh, going on with uh, the landfill, uh, CJ, and uh, some people are saying that uh, well, maybe uh, the landfill will be uh, eventually expanded. There's been some uh, behind the scenes uh, discussion about that, I hear, but. Um, Tell, her, tell the audience what uh, you found out. Well, I've been working on this story for, um, oh, I'd say about seven or eight days now, um, hardly looking at all the, the records and what we could get. Um, I had a long conversation with the Department of Environmental uh, Protection, uh, Mark Dakers, uh, and he wasn't happy if, with talking to me. Uh, he said I need to go through their press office. But he did give me some of the information that I was looking for. Um, there is no application at this point in time to expand the landfill. Mm -hmm. um, it is scheduled, according to the Department of Environmental Protection, to close in October of this year. The problem we have is this. The administration has known about the alleged contamination. I use the word alleged very strongly. Uh, the reason being is nobody can find any records anywhere about it. Okay, when we say contamination, contamination of what? There's a parcel of land, uh, according to the city administrator, Kathy Ann Viveris, uh, it's about six acres. You spoke to her? Uh, she spoke today very clearly to the press uh, oh. via WSAR in regards to this issue. Um, <coughs> and she says that it's six acres. Um, WSAR and other sources, uh, including what I've looked at. So six, six additional acres that could be used for no, six additional acres that are private land. There was found on there illegal waste material dumped. On a six acres? Uh, on the land. It's, um, Who owns that land? We don't know that yet. This it, is another one of those questions from city government. We don't know. Is this the chair no of that contamination from before? Yes. And this abuts the landfill? This abuts and the landfill. And it goes deep enough that it is affecting the aquifer and the... Um, the water supply? Correct. 11 to 20 feet deep, this um, waste has been found. They've dug down. What kind of waste? Uh, it's solid municipal waste, SMW. Uh, and well, I mean, it could be uh, bricks? It could be anything. Uh, but we do Timber. know that there's newspapers in there because the newspapers date it to the time when the city owned, well, excuse me, let me correct that, when the Fall River Office of Redevelopment owned and operated the Fall River Landfill. According to administration, the city was never owned by the landfill. The landfill was never owned by the city, and that. But according to um, M. Earl Gordet, former 
city council president from 1961 to 1965, um, the city knew about this contamination. Well, when as you say, he stated when you today. Say the, um, the city never owned the landfill. The, the city council actually voted to transfer or to sell the landfill. So they must have had some ownership interest. Well, that's what we say because that issue did come up before the city council uh, back in the 70s. And they, and voted, they to voted to transfer and sell the landfill. And to, that to Alan Jarabek. Right, to Alan Jarabek. And that transfer had on it that Mr. Jarabek would absorb the cost of the cleanup. Here was the caveat. That six or 20 acres, depending on who you talk to, that is contaminated is not part, nor has it ever been part, of the Fall River landfill footprint. So this is six additional, or six acres that abuts the landfill, and at this point, <coughs> uh, it, it's not, well, you don't know who owns it. Right. And the... So, okay, l w let's get to the six acres. W what is the pertinence of the six acres at this well, point? Well, what's happened, and again, it, there's a question on whether it's six or 20 acres. The, the problem is, is that the municipal waste that has been down there, and they've done uh, test bores, and they've gone into it, and they found a newspaper giving a date, um, and they also drew up contaminants, hazardous waste. From that six acres? From that area, because it was illegally dumped there. That was never approved, nor has it been lined to be a landfill. And the city knew. You think it was a private landfill, someone who just? No, that actually was part of, the dumping was part of what was supposed to go into our landfill. But people were, the landfill or people who were told to do so were dumping in this area that had never been approved. So it's uh, classified as an illegal dump. But DEP and the city knew of this area going back to 1980. And DEP, knowing that this area was contaminated, continued to approve expansions of the landfill. The biggest problem is this. The contaminated waste, the, the solid waste goes down 11 to 20 feet. When they did the test pours, the water table is at four to eight feet. Mm -hmm. And those test pours showed contamination. Well, was there any effect? Uh, the water table is there, but uh, is there any flow from that area into, and I guess this is the, the key point, which is we'll probably, you haven't said it, well, you're talking about North Watapa, our drinking water. Correct. So, but is there any, do you know if there's any flow or is that just? The city's position is that the water in that area runs northwest, which would be away from the Watapa. Toward the river. Okay. The problem is this. They are using a supposed, remember I say a supposed, piece of bedrock, which would keep the contaminated water from flowing into the North Watapa. When you say contaminated, but you don't know if it's, it's, it's really contaminated, contaminated. It, it, it could be very uh, innocuous type materials. Contamination papers. usually means deadly materials. That's yeah. the word so, that is connected We don't to know. That. We don't know exactly what the contamination is. Correct. Yeah. But there's, a, there's Mother's Brook runs right through that area, and oh. that's, a, that's a tribute, that's a major a major small water supply that goes all the way down to other water supplies and other water avenues that we okay. live off of. So I, I think it's people, a bigger deal. I think people out there sitting and saying, "Now, what does all this mean?" What now, all this uh, means? Let is me let me just <laughs> let me lay the groundwork a little okay. more again. The the, the landfill. Uh, the administration has said that, uh, and the landfill people have said that they're going to be closing in October. It's going to be full. Mm -hmm. There's been discussions about what to do with the waste. Now it's been revealed that there's been uh, private discussions in regards to expanding the landfill. Mm -hmm. So an expansion would take place, are you saying on this 20, uh, or this 6 or 20 acres? Is this the problem, or are we talking about different the Two different things. Yeah, the the, the contamination is different than the expansion. The expansion uh, would require the purchase the pr of private properties, but the properties currently have businesses on them. 
These are not empty lots. Can you tell us what business is? Um, Rob Melian was on the radio the other day talking about this, and, and he was quite upset. Chambers against that. Chambers against it because we're going to lose jobs in the industrial park Correct. because of it, because the businesses would close. It also Why would abuts they Why would they the Matuk right. expansion, so he would have the landfill then come right up to his property line. And he would not be able to expand. Is well, no, it would come right up to its expansion. So he would. It, he has a showroom. In his business, and he doesn't want to have people look out the window and see seagulls flying by. With mm, the yeah. I wouldn't want to walk through the door with the smell emanating from there. All Mount right, Trashmore so produces smell. a lot of noxious gas, and oh. also that gas is flammable. So That's methane gas. It's flammable. So you've got you've got a, an expansion of the landfill means a a a sm making smaller of the industrial park. So in order to put trash in, we are taking away jobs from the city, which the city fathers and the city administrators rail about all the time about jobs. Okay, so is this the, the uh, underlying controversy? It's the part of the controversy, yeah. Jobs. Uh, <laughs> jobs lost. In other words, uh, <coughs> the, the expansion of the landfill, <coughs> as supposed negotiations or discussions are going on, uh, could affect eventual job creation yes. of additional jobs. Yes. But no. there is there is, like you said, there was you said there were two parcels of land adjacent to the landfill. And those two parcels of land potentially could be used for additional landfill. Well it has to all be approved again. Oh, no, so yeah, it's yeah good, potentially. Yeah. Potentially. But you're saying there are businesses on. There are businesses on those properties now. What are the names of the businesses? I, if you know? I can't off the top of yeah, my head remember them. Head, but there are there they employ right. people. They're, okay, so they're in other words, this is private land. They mm -hmm. would sell a property, and of course, the businesses would have to, you know, close, move away. But the biggest problem is this: in the area where this um, material has been found, and the land parcels that are in that area, those landowners have already said they don't want to sell. And now, as of today, um, City Administrator Kathy Ann Vivera said that um, they're taking it under advisement. But they've made it perfectly clear they don't want to sell it for an expansion of the landfill. Um, well, but there, those owners there, have any, any, a remediation right. Is there any, um, is there any mention of the, uh, the big words, eminent domain? Uh, uh, what am I talking about? Uh, the, the taking of the property. Right. Am I using That's, you're using the right term. Okay, good. Yeah, good, good, yeah good, I know good. it sounds funny, but yeah, you're using yeah. the right term. Uh, any uh, that, the big phrase come out? No, okay. none at all. And the thing is, is that if you remember correctly, the mayor had said um, that he was not involved in the um, acquisition of the land or in the dealings to buy the land for the expansion of the uh, landfill. But today, City Administrator Kathy Ann Viveris clearly stated that the mayor is involved. So again, we get the backdoor politics and the backdoor dealings and the statements from the mayor contradicted by other city administration staff, contradicted by the city council. And, and the city council not involved at all in any of this uh, when Mike, they're yeah, holding council hearings. Council Michael Mioza was a, yes. a big concern. Now, uh, as you said, um, Mr. Mellon of the Chamber of Commerce here in Fall River said that this would not be good for business, that the chamber would be against, um, I guess, any expansion. Yes. So his proposal, uh, his his statement basically is, that's it for the landfill. They've wanted the landfill closed for years, and they figured this that's it. Well, we've known it was going to be closed for right. years is the problem, and this administration has done zero to make plans for the future. Zero. Not nothing. Not even an inch. Nothing's happened, and because nothing's happened, he's now in an emergency situation where he's having to backpedal and try to figure something out but quick, but the but quick is dangerous. Well, um, let's, uh, let's put a little, uh, let's put a little spice on, on our little discussion here and uh, the word out there uh, is that uh, this mayor's not gonna run again. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Well, you so have. If, if he doesn't care to run again, then maybe he, he doesn't have that great concern in regards to the landfill. Am I going too far? Well, I mean, if you look at the history of this mayor, after his first term, he came out and said very clearly to the people of Fall River, I made a mistake. I made a lot of mistakes. But give me a second chance. 
So the city being, oh, poor thing, poor thing, <laughs> gave him another chance. Okay? And he came back after a second term, and we've moved forward river forward. I found us to be back there something. So oh, now, no, but it was not, I've made mistakes. Now yeah. it was, we're not looking behind us. Right, we're not looking we're to not the rearview mirror. We're not looking in the rearview mirror. So yeah. again, Fall River doesn't accept its problems in order to fix its future. And I think that has to happen before anything else in this city. Well, then let's move on. And we've got the, um, uh, the revelation uh, three, four weeks ago, I guess now, <laughs> that uh, lo and behold, uh, we might have a big casino coming Quick to fix, town. yes, the mayor's quick uh, fix again. In other words, uh, it always seems that there's, there's something on the horizon. Mm -hmm. uh, 3,000, uh, 4,000 jobs, uh, 5,000 jobs, but uh, let me, before we actually get on that mm -hmm. too deeply, uh, it was revealed that um, the um, Fall River Office of Economic Development, the Redevelopment Authority at their meeting had a presentation by someone who seems to be like a, somewhat of a broker, uh, and he was um, presenting uh, his idea about the biopark, which was the 300 acres that was set aside no. for life sciences, uh, whatever those companies uh, are supposed to do. But of course, um, there was talk, you know, and early on in uh, this administration about a casino. But what came out of the meeting was basically that they can't find any company that'll come to settle on that land uh, for life sciences. It's just really too bad. Something they're empty. not marketing it properly. Well, that was that's a, Viola's that was some job. Dis discussion about that yeah. and the presentation by this gentleman who uh, he, he seemed to be uh, a broker in a sense that. Uh, he thought maybe uh, a distribution center, like Stop and Shop, they would have these, this gigantic warehouse. So, uh, where is this? Where is this? Uh, this going? Uh, we get the bio park, uh, the whatever you know that's supposed to hold, and it doesn't seem to be developing like expected. And now the grandiose uh, idea of you know a lot of jobs. Uh, uh, Amazon's coming to town one day. <laughs> uh, you know, because he wrote a letter. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's always the big thing, it, huh? He writes a letter. Just, a, just an, another trial balloon, something that's pretty empty. Well, before before <laughs> Stephanie gets into this, what, look well, at, let's, let's just look discuss at, the merits right. of whether it could be here or not, not whether it's good or bad. For but, the uh, right, uh, but let's, let's look at what's happened. Revere has approved a casino. In a, 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 nar a narrow, structured vote for that one city, even right. though it affects Boston greatly. Exactly. And, and Marty Walsh came out, Mar Martin Walsh, yep. mayor of Boston, came out today and said he has major problems with the fact that it was a Revere-only vote. Exactly. Because the, uh, the, the infrastructure and the problems that will occur at that casino has everything to do with the city of Boston, and they were not involved in the vote. So yep. he's got a lot of clout. So. And, but the thing is, is that Revere has approved it, and um, what, what was it, Chelsea or East Boston rejected it. Yeah. So that's your site for Eastern Massachusetts. So you're going to get a casino up there. That casino will be open probably by this time next year. That's Suffolk Downs, is it not? Right. Yes. That's a Suffolk Downs site. Now, the slots parlor is being approved Friday. And where's that going? That is a, you got three sites, Springfield, Plainville, and Rainham. Okay, so they're just gonna vote on it, what you're saying? They're gonna approve it. And once it's approved, they will probably be open by June or July. Now, are we, you're talking two, three sites? One. One site. One, so one slot of those. Oh. And where they're looking at strategically is probably gonna be Plainville. And the reason why Plainville is it's the, the easiest target to attack the Rhode Island gambling industry because Plainville will take traffic away from Twin Rivers and it will take uh, traffic away from Newport Grand. Um, it's currently been affected that just with the opening of the slots parlor, 442 million dollars in five years will be lost to Massachusetts. Now, from Rhode Island? From and Rhode Island. And Connecticut? Okay, right. now when you say that goes to Massachusetts, 
you're saying that those people will gamble that much money in that slot parlor. Correct. Now, who owns the slot parlor? Cor exactly. It doesn't go to the people of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go to the government of Massachusetts. It's private it owners. goes to the private owner of the gaming casino, who then pays uh, host fees and taxes. And, and that money can end up in Malaysia or Indonesia. But or they have found that in, in states where they do have gaming and they also have a lottery, a well-established lottery, that lottery revenues go way down when the casino comes to town. Mm -hmm. And if lottery revenues go way down, that's money that Fall River gets directly out of, out of lottery, state lottery funds. So the, 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 the balance of the money shifts to the private industry, the private, the private company that runs a casino, and away from the pockets of the cities that benefit from the scratch tickets. Right, there's only so much money that someone will have to gamble. Exactly. Yes. And you make your choice, uh, you, you want to scratch a ticket, uh, play the lottery, uh, go up to the uh, uh, casino. Right. And, uh, and the Gaming Commission announced that the casino license for Eastern Massachusetts, which is Revere, the Suffolk Down site, um, will be approved by June or July of this year, with an opening by June or July of next year. The one for Western Massachusetts will be approved this fall. So that will be in the western part of the state. And the one for the south coast, which is Region C, will be approved sometime in the spring of 2015, which will result in a casino being opened in uh, 2016. The problem is this. The one problem? The one, the one big problem right now on the licensure is this. There are three <coughs> licenses, three communities fucking for a license. Taunton, Fall River, and New Bedford. Okay. In time, they're, they're banking their money on the tribal casino because that is a secure it's license. It's not going to happen. Again, Why that's not? what they're banking their money okay. on. Because they have to get land and trust, and and the uh, the uh, it's not going to happen with the uh, the Indian gaming. It's just they don't have. It takes five years to get that. It takes five years to even become up for the. They, under the Kasseri law, that has been. Uh, upheld and upheld and upheld, this organization, the, the Mashpees, did not get state recognition, did not get federal recognition until after the date which was legal for them to then open a casino. Which was 1934 and they are, they are yeah. It's been held, held over and over again by the Supreme Court. They're not going to get this land for the casino. That is a fool's errand that Taunton is on. So with that there's no truck. variance, uh, no uh, it's chance never gonna to... Happen. Uh, no. no. Even, though the, even though the Indian Affairs Bureau did approve the uh, compact the deal... The compact. ...between the governor and the tribe, you still have that hurdle to get over. No, it's federal law. Because they're a law. sovereign nation. Right. Yes. Okay, so you're talking about federal law. Federal law. Trumps right. whatever the government is exactly. here in yeah. Massachusetts. So, so that leaves New Bedford and Fall River, correct. I guess, of the, t the two locations. Now, K KP Urban well, why, why has Tons, been in the running well, for why, this for quite some Tons time. Why still be in a, in, in a running or in contention? Uh, let's put aside the Indians, the mm -hmm. tribe. And, and the time says, well, we can't get the Indians with a casino here, but we'll take something else. They've got to deal with the Indians to hold First. the land. They to. But you know. if, if it's uh, if it becomes in a sense uh, obvious that it's null and void because they'll never get it, the, the contract is. Uh, is they not haven't been in negotiations with right. any organizations to make this happen. And the problem is that the biggest problem. And you know how the mayor is rushing things right. with this 30 days to find a site, and things have to happen now because we have to you know hurry up and trick people before well, they vote. But that's you know. just talk. It is, but it isn't. It, but no, but it isn't. Because there he closed, he closed the, the proposals to sell land to the Foxwoods Casino deal um, yesterday. Yep. That was closed yesterday at 5 o'clock. Yep. And those bids are sealed. He, nobody can see them. This is my issue. My issue with this administration and with this committee, well, that's let's the search for the site, has to do with there being no open meetings. With this as a quasi-government, again, the mayor appointed these people, therefore it is a city, a city appointed commission that should then, like any other commission, have open, open meeting, and when those sealed bids are opened, as they are for in the RDA or any other place, you can go to that meeting and you can look at those proposals and you can hear what those proposals All were. All right, when you say these proposals, these bids, uh, these are proposals. They're not buying land. It, no, there, it, there's but, no site. Yeah, but it is. In other words, he's entertaining. The administration is entertaining 
these two, three proposals to choose. Well, we don't know how many. Yeah, we don't know how All many. All right, so. And, and Viola is the only one that's going right. to open them on the whole commission. Okay, so whatever the, the number is, they're going to be open, and then there's going to be a determination. What is by Viola, not the commission? Well, whatever is yeah. the best one. Well, it's According not so much the now, best one. Now, let's say, let me get that over that okay. pot, okay. and they choose the best one, but they still need a site. That's the, this is for the that's site. That's what these bids are. These the bids site. are offers to purchase the land. What land? To Fox. Whatever the land is. Private it could be the Haas and Jaeger property that's over on one side of the city. But there's no city. identified land, is there? That's what these proposals that's are. That's what these proposals are. There was identified land in the proposal. In the proposal. Yes. So and how much? It's going to cost Foxwoods to buy them. Yes, that's what And that's why when about. the mayor offered this, he came out and he said, do Fall River a favor. Sell the land cheap to Foxwoods. If I'm going to sell my land to a company that's going to make multi-million dollars a year, I'm going to sell it to them for a couple of million dollars. I'm not going to sell it to them cheap. And he wants waterfront. Right. And he wants access to the water. And the highway. And the that? highway. Who wants that? The mayor's, mayor's grand plan. This Foxwoods wants that. And here's the kicker. A lot of people hear Foxwoods and automatically they think the Pequot Indians. They think the Indians Sovereign are Sovereign nation. But they're not. No, but... It is an LLC that is managing the Foxwoods name Correct. in this area. However, the sovereign nation jobs will still go, the jobs that pay the most will still go to sovereign nation people of, from that tribe in this city. Indians. So right. the jobs that, these thousands and thousands of jobs that may open up, they're going to be low wage, they're going to be low skilled jobs, just like Fall Rivers used to. And it, those are the only jobs that would be And available. what did the mayor say about those jobs? The mayor said, this is what Fall River can provide. Fall River so, people still have to vote on this. Yes. And of course, they might turn it down. Yes. Uh, that's always a possibility. If my group has any say in the matter. Now, uh, let's, let's, what, what is the, uh, do you have an idea of the time frame? When would it come on the ballot? Let's say the, uh, the the proposals are in, one is chosen. When does this go to the voters? According to the mayor, he wants this done within 30 to 60 days after land selection and closings. What do you mean, special election? Yes. Yeah, and who's going to pay for that? Well, the taxpayers, of course. Of course. Mm. Or, uh, I mean, if I were the mayor, I would tell the uh, the, the, the the person, uh, the company, the entity that was chosen to pay for it. Yeah, but if you did that, you have an outside private interest group running an election. Running an election. Not running, paying for it. Mm, it's still the same it's thing. It's still influencing no, it's the, the election. Thing. It's an influence on the election. No, it's... it's they don't, I don't, they don't fund it, private elections. They don't fund special elections, uh, private it, industries. It could be part of the contract to come into the city and mm -hmm. establish a casino. The, the cost is going to be... Well, won. there's another thing. What you said, it could be part of the deal. There, there is no cost. deal yet. Mm -hmm. There is no... There is no negotiation happening for host host numbers and tax bases, and but that's none the, of that's happened yet. But is that not in the proposal? No, this proposal is strictly for right land. Now for land. Okay, well we're down to, to the end of the program. It's very interesting, and I've, as you can see, uh, I listen to uh, listen out there in the audience. It's it's a bit complicated. You're going to get all the um, little players and uh, find out what's going on, what tribes you're talking about, what areas, what uh, cities, uh, what proposals. Uh, it can be uh, worked through. It. So if you're interested, pay attention mm -hmm. and um, you'll have uh, an opportunity, people will fall roof to choose whether you want it or not in your city. So look, uh, Jack and I mean CJ. <laughs> <Phil> Jack <laughs> Anderson, I love it. <laughs> Jack Anderson, Fall <laughs> River. Stephanie, uh, Quarry, uh, hometown activist, uh, <laughs> person that's very involved. Thank you for being on our program. Thank you for having and me. And I hope to see you uh, soon. Always a pleasure to be here. Yes. And thank you out there for watching. And remember, uh, we've got the uh, dinner dance uh, that's coming up May 17th, EFW, Tiverton, Rhode Island, put on by Friends of Cook Pond. Tickets are $15.